build a better world today with drones. Everybody's always talking about drones as far as like driving cars and, and stuff like that. That really doesn't build a better world. It's the typical morons on Silicon Valley who always think about the things that we don't need. However, drones, probably one of the best uses of them is in ag. Uh, there's a lot of potential here. I'll give you an example. I used to live in uh, West Texas, and they have what they, I think they call bow weevils. And suppose you created a drone that killed those. So the way that farmers currently go after bow weevils, if I recall, is, uh, it's been a long time. It's like they spray their crops. You get this pesticide and stuff like that, which now everybody doesn't want to eat, of course. They're like, oh, I don't eat food that has pesticide on it. It's okay, so you eat food that bugs eat. Okay, interesting. Um... <laughs> It just people always find something to complain about. Just leave it alone. But anyway, you could train a drone to kill those, right? You could train a drone to actually identify where a bow weevil is and kill it, right? Another thing too is you could also train drones with, especially with data science now, we could actually figure out the ideal amount of water that plants need, right? I mean, one of the mistakes that Americans make is that, you know, you just got to keep watering plants, right? Like that's, that's one mistake. There's actually kind of an ideal amount of water that plants need. I'll give you a, my favorite example. This is uh, vineyards. I had vineyards for a while. And one of the things that I observed, they're a, they're a drought food. They do very well in droughts. And in fact, the grapes are much tastier when there's a really bad drought or when you don't give them very much water. They actually thrive in suffering. Like if you don't give them very much water, they do a better job than when you give them a lot of water. So it's actually, it's just a very strange thing. Some plants, if you really want to increase the quality of the plant, you actually give it less water than more. And so nowadays with all these numbers, we could, we could crunch this, figure out the ideal allocation, and then you could have drones that water the plants and are able to, to you know, put the exact amount of water that's needed for the plants. So, I mean, there's all kinds of potential. You could have it spray fertilizer. You could um, have drones uh, take care of the land. Um, it, it's, I don't know if y'all, if you've ever read Laura Ingalls Wilder, but it's kind of like the plows, right? You know, they used to attach a plow to a horse and they would dig in the land. Well, now we have tractors that do it. But now with drones, as we get more and more powerful drones, we could have the drones do it. And you could almost have the entire ag industry almost managed by a few people and just a bunch of drones. And that, talk about quality of, uh, quality or huge increase of the standard of living. So this is one of the examples where drones would be incredibly impactful because with the right amount of sensors, they could do things more effectively than humans. There's only so much we can do and we kind of rely on machines to do it even currently, but it's about making machines even more effective. And it's kind of like spraying, let's say, a pesticide on everything well, you could build a drone to kill things individually. Now, there is certain levels of insects, and I would agree with anyone who would say, yeah, but some insects are so small, you would have to use a pesticide, and you could use a drone to, to spray that. But if the drones are very affordable, this also lowers the entry into agriculture. For those of you who don't know, one of the, the tractors that they use in ag is John Deere. These tractors are very, very expensive. And so if you're, let's say, a new farmer, you just don't have the money to do that. So the key here is building low-cost drones with like 3D printing and whatnot so that the, the barrier to entry in agriculture is lower and so anyone can become a farmer. We definitely need more farmers. The average farmer is like, what, 58 years old and um, we're going to have a problem with the generation that doesn't know how to farm. And so this is one of those ways in which we can lower that barrier to entry. So there's a lot of potential here. There's a lot of uses in drones and I'll probably cover other other areas where drones would be helpful, but ag is probably one of the biggest wins, and I think one where they'll make a significant impact on everyone.